Perry V. Ferries was appointed Master Mechanic on July 1, 1870. Being the first mechanical officer of the company, Ferry's appointment commemorated the beginning of Santa Fe's industry-leading mechanical department. Most of Ferry's career was before the acquisition of Raton Pass. Therefore, he was not involved in the development of engines that came after the 440. George Hackney replaced Master Mechanic Harry B. Ferries as Chief Mechanical Officer of Santa Fe on November 1, 1878 with the title Superintendent of Machinery. By 1880, Santa Fe was experiencing rapid growth and needed more equipment. The railroad wanted locomotives designed to its specifications, not off-the-shelf power. After all, no one else had to deal with the grades of Raton Pass. The railroad sent a proposal to three locomotive builders to construct and deliver 10 280 locomotives for an 1880 fall delivery. Baldwin had the lowest bid and the two companies signed an agreement on March 13, 1880 for delivery to begin in August. This class prepared to do battle with the steep descending grades in the Raton area equipped with La Chetelier steam and hot water brakes. This required an exceedingly delicate touch from the engineer as he adjusted the valve for the device because too much water in the cylinders would cause severe damage. To learn more, look for the link in the description. The first of the 10 units delivered for some reason was number 132 and she became the first locomotive built as specified by the Santa Fe's mechanical department headed by George Hackney. Number 132 was delivered in October 1880 and was sent to Raton where it remained for 20 years. In 1898 it was renumbered to 912 and two years later in 1900 it was renumbered to 2414. At the turn of the 20th century it was replaced by more powerful locomotives and reassigned to local and yard switching service. In 1923, the locomotive was sent to the Argentine yard where it was assigned to switching service and remained there until 1939. In 1940, after 60 years of service on the Santa Fe, it was scheduled to be scrapped because of the poor condition of the firebox and an estimate of $8,500 repair cost. The superintendent of the Topeka shops, H. H. Stevens, sent John Purcell a list of materials and labor to repair the engine. The new list had an even higher total of $8,944. Upon receiving this information, Purcell sent a written order back to Stevens to hold the locomotive for display purposes. John Purcell was born in 1870 in St. Charles, Missouri and was hired by the Santa Fe Railway as a machinist helper in 1884 earning 90 cents a day. In 1887, at age 17, he was a foreman. Not bad for a young man who had little formal education and learned what he knew about mechanical engineering from experience. In 1902 he became superintendent of the Topeka shops at age 32 and remained in that position for 10 years. At age 42 he was assigned to a brand new position on the Santa Fe by President E.P. Ripley, mechanical assistant to operating vice president. He was now in charge 
of all things mechanical on the Santa Fe. We will learn as we go deeper into this series how important John Purcell was to the development of steam and diesel locomotive technology on the Santa Fe Railway. For now, we will just explore his decision to save engine 2414 from being scrapped since it was the oldest surviving locomotive in the company's history. The locomotive was shipped to the Topeka shops for preservation work. First, they had to locate some missing parts and find a suitable tender. Shop forces were tempted to give up on the project due to the difficulty locating a tender, but John Purcell insisted that 2414 was to be held as a relic. It was refurbished twice in 1940 to 1941 for static display use. The second time it was configured as number 132. World War II started in December of 1941, but it was spared from the scrap drives because it had become a corporate historic icon. In 1950, it was overhauled and returned to operation as locomotive number one, Cyrus K. Holiday. With two 1880s coaches, the Holiday performed under steam at local celebrations fairs and other events. It appeared in films and was seen in an episode of the Gunsmoke television series. As the Cyrus K. Holiday, locomotive number one ran under its own power for the last time in 1961 and public static displays of the engine tapered off in the 1970s. Santa Fe donated the locomotive to the Kansas Historical Society and in February 1883, the train was shipped by flat car to the museum site and placed inside the new display building. It is amazing that Santa Fe Railway's oldest surviving locomotive and the first locomotive Santa Fe's mechanical department provided exacting specifications to the builder can still be seen as a static display over 144 years after it was originally built. The successful locomotive design of the 132 and her nine sisters, although more powerful than Uncle Dick, still were not enough for the demands of Raton Pass. This chart shows that on a 3% grade, they could only move 235 tons or about five loaded boxcars. The United States at this time was experiencing tremendous growth and the demand for moving tonnage over the pass by rail was putting a lot of pressure on the Santa Fe to develop locomotives with extreme power. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in episode 4.